Right then, so welcome back to my channel. However, if you're new here, I'm currently building my BMW S38 B36 for my E30 Touring. So this is the third video so far for the engine build. What we're going through today is the PTV clearances. That's the piston to valve. So with having bigger, bigger cams, higher compression ratio pistons, and adjustable cam sprockets, we wanna make sure that nothing's gonna fail. And whilst recording this video, I did repaint the garage. So halfway through, you might see a bit of a change, much more organized. Okay, so the bolts are in and just hand tight practically so now we've got some new specifications so it's going to start with 20 newton meters 60 degrees and then 70 degrees following the same usual path so let's get on with that As I went through in the last video, I've installed lighter springs to the front two valves. And what that's able to do is I'm able to press that with my finger and I can figure out the piston to valve clearance. However, I didn't install the rest of the shims, but you'll see that becomes a problem. Okay, so my nifty plan of just installing the front two buckets as they have the slight spring on doesn't work, unfortunately. Didn't think about it, but the cam lobes hit the tops of the valves. So we're gonna have to install all the buckets and shims and then tighten it fully down. So I'm gonna add all the rest of the bolts in, remove the cams, fit all the buckets, and then we'll have to go from there. However, before I put all the rest of the buckets and shims in, due to the valves getting moved around, I've had to line this up with top dead center. And now what I'm gonna do is fit this little thing, just so I can index away from top dead center, just to allow the valves to seat correctly. And then, so I've made this, so that'll go on there. I can glue that in place. And then we've, we know exactly where top dead center is and anywhere from there. Okay, and here's my little angle gauge I've just made. So there's a little arrow here to say where it's at. So I used the top dead center of the original one and then installed this. So now what I wanna do is clock it back 45 odd degrees and that's just to make sure that there's no pistons at top dead center. As when you're putting the cams in, due to not uh, getting the exact timing, some of the uh, lobes may be pushing down. So as I just explained, I need to fit all the buckets and the shims. Now, unfortunately, these used to be all aligned exactly in the right order. And over the years, they've been knocked about, some have moved, and then all of a sudden, they all came off. So what I'm going to have to do is start from fresh. So now, I've just given everything an ultrasonic clean, and unfortunately, I've lost some of the numbers. So what I'm going to do now is measure up, and they're just going to go in as they are now. And then later on, I can check the clearances and then redo them all. With new valves and seats and cams and loads of other things, they may not even be correct anyway, so it wouldn't have really mattered. I've checked most of these and they're all within spec.
Okay, so with the shims and the buckets in, with the cams in place, it's now time to tighten up the holders. So there's 28 bolts, 28 nuts, sorry. I've got all of them ready to go. The next focus is to tighten these up. So as you can see, some of the bolt holes, some of the threads are sticking through, however, some aren't. So what I need to do is install the ones that I can. And then luckily with this one, it has hexagons here, so I'm able to rotate the cam to then lower down the rest of it. Okay, so unfortunately, the phone just died, so I didn't show you tightening everything up and talking it together. And I was talking away to myself. So here it is, all in place. So as you can, as I said before, the TDC is there. So I've clocked it away from the TDC. That allows me to rotate these without any interference, pistons and the valves. The so next up is to install the cam sprockets so now these are going to be adjustable they're currently with the machine shop so hopefully they're back soon we can time everything up and then we can start checking some clearances so these are Schrick cams there are 284 degree sweep so that's a 20 degree increase from standard standard 264 and what that means is that the valves at top dead center are going to be open a lot more than standard so initially I was told it was 3.5 millimeters of lift at top dead center. However, after emailing Shrik, they've sent me a new document and it's 2.84. So all I'm doing here is starting with the lobes off the valve, setting the DTI to zero, and then rotating it around until I reach the desired number. And here we have all the sprockets on and the timing chains on. Unfortunately, I didn't film this. However, I will be revisiting it as I've still got to remove the lighter springs. So you just have a nice little look at the nice clean workshop. So here we have two full rotations of the engine. This is the first time I've done it on any engine as this is my first ever rebuild. So I'm very, very happy. And now we get to the very long-winded stage of piston to valve clearance checks. So all I'm doing here is initially starting with the cams in the standard position and then ro rotating the engine from minus 15 to 15 degrees from top dead center at five degree increments. I can figure out the valve lift and also the piston to valve clearance. With those taken, I'm able to adjust the cams. So now these have got a slight degree of advancing and retarding on the cams. And as you can see here, as I'm advancing the intake, it will be reducing the amount of valve lift. And then all I'll do is tighten everything back up and repeat the exact same measurements again. So I'll be checking the valve lift and I'll be checking the PTV. With the lighter springs, you can feel it by hand, but also I can take a measurement and write it down anyway, just so I'm safe. And then once again, by retarding the cam gears, we're able to take the measurements from the other end of the spectrum. So this will be increasing the valve lift at closest up to the center. Now reading through forum posts, Mostly you'll be only adjusting the exhaust, but whilst I'm there, I thought it'd be a great idea to kind of get my head around how it all works and just take some measurements. So after about an hour, we can now actually move on to the exhaust. So once again, standard, advanced, and then retarded, positions, checking the valve lift, checking the PTV. I get absolutely sick of it, but it's very important to do. And then with those done, it'll give you all the readings. As you can see here, it's a pretty big mess, but we've got the standard readings from the intake and the exhaust with the lift and the PTVs at different angles of the crank. And my aim here is to make sure I don't go below two millimeters. So once again, now checking the advance and retardant of the intake, all good here. You can work out that it all makes sense as the numbers move correctly. But then with the exhaust, advancing it gets very close to, oh, it's 0.9 millimeters. That is too close. So we don't want to be going near there. However, we won't need to because we'll be going the other way. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.